In this video, we're going to take a look at a new feature in Substance Painter called Dynamic Strokes. Now, this feature is very powerful, and as the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. What I mean to say is this feature is very powerful, and while easy to use here in Substance Painter, the feature itself can be quite complex. So in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the inner workings of Dynamic Stroke, so that you can walk away with a full understanding of how to best take advantage of this new feature. So let's first define what a dynamic stroke is. A dynamic stroke is a brush stroke that is powered by a substance file. The substance file can dynamically control each stamp inside of a brush stroke. Individual elements of a brush stroke can be modified based on a behavior designed in the substance file itself. So now let's look at an example. So here at my shelf, I'm going to do a search for dynamic stroke. And you can see that we have filtered a lot of assets that are shipping with Substance Painter that can use this dynamic stroke property. We have a new tag, dynamic stroke, that lets us filter the content here in the shelf. So for example, if I right click on this gradient hue, here you can see under tags, we have dynamic stroke. You'll also notice that we have a new icon, which indicates which assets are dynamic stroke compatible. In this case, we're going to take a look at this gradient hue. So I'm just going to left click on this gradient hue tool, and here I'm going to just paint a stroke. So as I start to paint this stroke, you can see that, well, I'm painting with a gradient, but the dynamic stroke is allowing me to choose a specific color from that gradient to produce the stroke that you see here. To enable the dynamic stroke, a specific resource is needed, and that resource is the substance file that I mentioned earlier in this video. So for example, here we have chosen to use this gradient hue, and I can see that this is dynamic stroke compatible. So if we take a look at what this tool is made from, over here in my properties, underneath the material, I can see that a substance file was loaded here into the base color. This substance file has the dynamic stroke capability as part of the substance file parameters. And within this, I can see that there is a set of dynamic controls. This particular tool is using stamp index. There are three types of dynamic controls. In this video, we're going to look at the two that you will most likely use. First, we will look at the stamp start. A substance file can generate a pool of stamps to be used by the brush. The stamp start is only available if the substance file has the stamp index dynamic control. The stamp index is the ID for the stamps being generated by the substance file. You can use the stamp start to indicate which stamp index the brush should start from. In the case of the gradient hue, where we are sampling a color value from a gradient, choosing from beginning, or stamp index ID of zero, we'll choose the red color for our first stamp. And choosing random index, we'll randomly choose a stamp from the pool, which in this case would be a value from the gradient. So now we're here in Substance Painter and let's draw some strokes. Again, I'm using the gradient hue tool. And so I'm just gonna draw a stroke here and you can see that it goes from a starting value of red and then it ends here on this teal color. Let's do another stroke. You can see I'm getting the exact same result and one more stroke once again, the same result. And that is because my stamp start is set to this from beginning, which means that the stamp index is always going to be zero. And in the case of this particular substance file, that stamp index of zero correlates to this red color, which is the first value in the gradient. So now let's undo these strokes and we're gonna switch our stamp start here to a from random index. So now we're gonna do a stroke and you can see that it starts off here with kind of this yellow. Let's do another stroke. Uh, this time we start off with green. Let's do yet another stroke. This time it starts off more of this kind of dark blue. And one more stroke, again, kind of starts off with the pink value going to red, yellow, green, and so on. So what this means is that when the start stamp is set to random index, the substance will choose a random stamp index for the starting value. And then it will pick back up in sequential order from there. So you're not sampling a random set of values throughout the entire stroke, it's just that very first sample index. Next, we are going to look at the stamp cycle count. This parameter is only available when the dynamic control is set to stamp index as well. 
It controls when Substance Painter should stop generating new substance variations and start recycling from the existing stamp pool. So here we are back in Substance Painter. We're using the Gradient Hue tool. We have the stamp start is set to from beginning and we have this default stamp cycle count of 128. Now, as I start to draw the stroke, you'll see that we are cycling through the entire range of colors found in that gradient. And eventually, we'll end up recycling as soon as we hit the max value for this stamp cycle count. So you can see here we start at red, we go through all the colors, and eventually it loops back through that pool of stamps and starts over again and just repeats the process. So let's undo that stroke and let's just lower this stamp cycle count. So here, let's put it at a value of 64. And now I'm gonna draw a stroke again. You'll see that we can cycle through that range of color in that gradient much faster now because we've lowered the overall stamp cycle count, which in effect means that we're going to begin repeating from that pool of stamps more quickly than we did with that original 128 value. Now this stamp cycle count can have a pretty dramatic impact on performance, so you want to be careful if you set this value too high. So the next dynamic control that I want to cover is going to be the random seed. So to set this up, I'm going to come over here to my brushes and I'm going to choose just this basic hard brush. Then I'm going to come back here to the material and I'm just going to remove uh, this gradient hue. And so here for my base color, I'll just click this button and I have filtered this to be procedural cell and I'm going to grab just this cell procedural texture and I'll left click on this to load that into my base color. Now a few other settings, let me just increase my brush size so we can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna come over here to my noise parameters and I'm just gonna lower uh, my scale, something like that here. And we'll just decrease this balance a little bit. Now, since we're using this procedural texture, you can see that it also has this dynamic stroke capability. And here you can see that the dynamic controls are set to random seed. And that is because this procedural substance file has random parameters. Now, typically we can control the random seed on the substance itself. However, we can now override this here inside of Substance Painter by using this dynamic control random seed. So here we have the random seed type set to single, and let's just see what this does. So here in the viewport, I'm just gonna start to paint a stroke. Actually, let me undo that, and let's come up here to my brush, and let me just increase my spacing here. Uh, let's see, get a little bit more, just so we can see what we're doing. Okay, I think that'll work. All right, so now we paint a stroke, and you can see that each stamp, what we get is an identical result. So every single stamp is the exact same. Let's come back here to the dynamic control parameter. And what I'm gonna do this time, let me just undo that stroke and we're gonna set the random seed type. We have a few options here. We're gonna start with this random per stroke. So now we're gonna do a stroke. So now we have this result for this stroke. Let's do another stroke. And you can see that this stroke is giving me another random set of stamps. Now within the stroke, all the stamps are the same. However, we can use this random seed type of random per stroke to vary the pattern per stroke. Let's do this one more time and you can see that we get a different result and once more we get a completely different result. All right, so let's undo these strokes and this time we're gonna change our random seed type to random per stamp. So now when we draw our stroke, we are going to get a random result per stamp. So here I'm just gonna draw a few more strokes and every time a stamp is being generated, we're getting a completely random result. Once again, you want to be a bit careful about having this set to random per stamp because this could have uh, an impact on your overall performance. Now, one other thing that I want to mention about using this uh, procedural here, if we're in our shelf, we're going to look at our procedurals. Uh, let me just view this with large thumbnails. So we've also added a new icon, as you can see here, that says includes randomness. So whenever you see this attached to a procedural, this tag means that it can be used with dynamic stroke to control the random seed value. And as you look through the shelf, you'll see that there uh, are a vast number of procedurals that support this randomness. So here I am taking a look at the tools section in Substance Painter shelf, and we have a lot of these tools uh, that you can use uh, to try out the dynamic strokes. And in this example, I'm gonna use this uh, dynamic rock. So these tools were created in Substance Designer 
And you can use Substance Designer to create your own dynamic stroke capable substance files. And as you can imagine, the sky's the limit with what you can possibly create. And we will have some tutorials in the future on how to create substances specifically for use with dynamic stroke here in Substance Painter. However, one of the things that I just want you to keep in mind is that although you can create all kinds of different unique variations, you do always want to be mindful of the performance of Substance Painter. So I urge you to take a look at the Substance Painter documentation. We have a very specific performances section on how to work with dynamic strokes. And so one thing that I want to kind of showcase with this, again, I have this dynamic rock. And here you can see that I have a fairly low uh, stamp cycle count, so it's set to six, and my stamp start is set to from random index. Now you'll notice that the dynamic controls for this particular substance here is using both random seed and stamp index. So you can have more than one type of dynamic control for a stroke. So here I'm just going to start to just paint some of these pebbles into here, and then I'm just going to update my viewport. Let me just move my light around a little bit. So now I'm starting to get you know some of these pebbles in here. Now in terms of performance, you may also want to look at some of the built-in jitter functionality for your brush itself. So instead of trying to create or use a substance where uh, everything is done through the dynamic control system, you can start to think about which type of these settings can be driven by the brush itself. So for example, I'm just gonna undo this here and maybe instead of just using this from random index, I might just do uh, from the beginning here and the random seed type was set to random per stamp which since we're creating a random seed for every single stamp within that substance file, I'm gonna actually just set this to random per stroke. Now, if I come over to my brush settings, I'm gonna to start to play around with my size and position jitter. And now I'll go back and start to just paint my stroke again. And so I'm getting a little bit faster performance here as I use this tool in my viewport. And again, I'm just gonna update my lighting here. And you can see with this particular substance, perhaps turning off some of the dynamic control and instead relying here on these built-in jitter controls can give me the illusion of enough randomness and variation to get the exact effect that I want and also have good viewport performance as well. So it's just something to think about. And again, I urge you to check out our documentation on dynamic strokes, specifically the section we have on performance. So you might be thinking dynamic strokes, pretty cool. There's some good content to play with, but I don't know Substance Designer, or I don't wanna go into Substance Designer to create a dynamic stroke. I would rather just stay here in Substance Painter. So we've updated the Brush Maker Alpha here in Substance Painter to allow you to create your own brush that uses dynamic controls. So to close out the tutorial, let's walk through how that works. So I'm gonna start by just creating a new layer and uh, what I'm gonna do is just come over to my brushes and I'm gonna start with just a default basic hard brush. And for the material, you can see I'm just using my color channel set to red so we can see what we're doing here. And let's come over to the brush settings. And if you take a look, you can see that the jitter controls I have, they're all zero, 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 so everything's off. Now for the alpha, I'm gonna click this alpha button I'm searching the tags alpha dynamic stroke and the first option I have here is the brush maker, which as I said has been updated uh, to be dynamic stroke compatible. So let's use the brush maker. Okay, so now we're gonna scroll down to our pattern and what I'm gonna do is set this to be a custom alpha. And let's come over here to our alphas and I'm gonna use this arrow border cut, left click, drag and drop that here into the custom alpha. So now we have a brush that we can start working with and you'll notice that this brush under the alpha here has some dynamic stroke capability and the control it's using is the stamp index. We have our stamp start, we can choose between the beginning or random index and then we also have a slider here for the stamp cycle count which is set to 25 by default. All right, so one other thing that I wanna do with this is I'm just gonna come up here and turn my follow path on and then just increase my spacing a little bit. So now let me come in and just draw a stroke here and you can see that uh, this is the result that I get. Uh, we start here with a, a very small stamp and then as we get towards the end of the stroke, we get uh, a pretty large stamp. So let's take a look at how this is working. So we have the dynamic control over our stamp index and the way that we adjust the stamp is through the parameters and we have a specific set of elements we can work with, which is size, opacity, rotation, and hardness. 
So if we take a look at the size, you can see here that the start value is zero, so it's real low, and the end value is one, and then as we get here to this uh, middle value at 0.5. So I'm just gonna undo this stroke here, and if I come back to my spacing, let me just decrease the spacing and I'll paint another stroke. Now you can see that, again, let's go back to where we have our size. We start with uh, a value of zero as we get towards the end of that stamp cycle count, uh, which is going to be in our case 25. That is going to be the end value of one. And then as I explained earlier in the tutorial, once we reach the stamp cycle end value, we just recycle those stamps. So now we start at zero and we start moving all the way up towards the end of the stroke. Now again, if we started from the beginning and we go to this end, you'll see there's 25 uh, varied stamps in here, which is being driven by the size parameter. So I'm just gonna undo this and uh, let's see, let's go ahead and take our end value and set that to zero. And then we can do you know, another stamp and get something like this. So you can start to, like I said, work with these patterns to add this dynamic control to a brush that you're creating. So this time, let me go back up and increase my spacing once more. And let's see, we're working with our size. Let's take our end value back up to one. And this time, let's play around with our rotation. So let's start with a rotation value of zero and an end value of one. And let's create a stroke again here. And so now you can see that again, we start with zero. And as we get towards one, we start to just rotate the stamp. Again, all of this is dynamically driven within the stroke itself. We can also play around with this middle value. So let me take this uh, closer to the start of the stroke and we'll paint our stroke here. And now you can see that we start to do a little bit of rotation here and we get a completely different result to this stroke just because we've changed these dynamic properties for rotation and size. Now, if we come up here to our dynamic stroke, we can always change the cycle count and then we can, instead of using from the beginning, we could set this to a random index and we'll just draw another stroke here and you can see we get something that's just a little different and so on. There's also controls in here for opacity as well as the hardness of the alpha. So once we set this up and we find something that you like, you can always just right click here in the properties and choose to create a brush preset from this. Or if you have a material associated with it, you can create a tool preset as well. And so by using the brush maker, you have the capability to work with the stamp index dynamic control to create your own dynamic stroke directly here inside of Substance Painter. So that's gonna wrap up this tutorial video. As you can see, the dynamic stroke is a very powerful tool also, it's a bit complex, so I invite you just to jump in, just play around, see what you can come up with. Uh, once again, here in the shelf, just know if you just go and use the dynamic stroke tag, uh, you can see all of the resources that we ship with that are dynamic stroke compatible. There's a lot of stuff to play around with in here. And you can also customize a lot of these tools and alphas depending on how you set up the dynamic stroke. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.